as a kid i was very clear that i wanted to do engineering and go to a, go to iit because it was supposed to be the most prestigious institution so i i really worked my ass off had no social life in 11th and 12th grade and <laughs> somehow uh, got into iit but uh, later i realized that getting out of iit was more difficult than getting in because <laughs> i totally sucked at engineering and it was a nightmare in terms of you know getting those i mean passing those courses and you know everyone who enters iit realizes this one uh, truth that uh, in iit you are the dumbest person in the room and literally everyone feels that hey sir thank you so much for joining us on thinking out loud podcast um samya and i are super super stoked to have you here and have this conversation today thank you so much again sir thank you likewise Uh, just to kind of start uh, you know uh, what was it like you know growing up and uh, obviously we done a research and you know you guys you were in iit but then i think it it didn't do much and you from being an iit and to creating like a creative agency now uh, called the minimalist uh, how was the entire transition was it always that you aspired or were you always like this creative from your childhood or it is something that developed over time yeah i mean it's a very uh... funny story not funny but uh, i mean it was very serendipitous so to speak uh, because i didn't really have a grand strategy that one day i would get into the creative space and build a company in that space it was actually more of me being totally clueless and just stumbling upon this thing uh, but as a kid i was very clear that i wanted to do engineering and go to a, go to iit because it was supposed to be the most prestigious institution so i i really worked my ass off had no social life in 11th and 12th grade and <laughs> somehow uh, got into iit but uh, later i realized that getting out of iit was more difficult than getting in because <laughs> i totally sucked at engineering and it was a nightmare in terms of you know getting those i mean passing those courses and you know everyone who enters iit realizes this one uh, truth that uh, in iit you are the dumbest person in the room and literally everyone feels that way and i felt it the most i guess because i really was the dumbest over there uh, and so essentially engineering was very difficult for me uh, because i was not inherently passionate about it uh, and my belief is that iit the entrance exams don't really check for scientific inclination and aptitude they probably check for you know people who are really smart and have probably some analytical very sharp analytical skills but not really scientific inclination so, so when i went there i realized that i am not really cut out for this as most engineers in the country realize when they enter engineering institutions and that's when uh i realized that actually i didn't even realize i was into content creation back back in the day so in my second year i used to write uh, one liner jokes on facebook and it would make people uh-huh. laugh and get a lot of reactions and i would really enjoy that i would write answers on quora i would try my hand at blogging and i used to run a facebook page also where i used to blog and then i tried on google so i was tinkering with different kinds of content back in 2012 uh when content creation was not really a thing yeah uh, when it was just the early days of you know social media and the internet taking off and becoming a really popular thing and that's right. when you know over the years of tinkering and dabbling with creative pursuits whether i was into drumming also i learned drumming at wow. iit and just to spend a lot of time so i was into all of these things everything except academics so while i was doing this i met my partner chirag who was also obsessed with design and we were both traveling to the same location for our internships Uh, to save money of course and in, on the course of those auto rides i got to know him better and we realized that both of us have this really deep passion for creativity while he is obsessed with design and you know creating some very thought provoking designs i was passionate about humor writing uh, and the commonality in both of our passions was that what we wanted to do with our work mm-hmm. was to work that is very thought provoking where people should think and say ah i mean how did they get this idea and they should be they should be jealous of the idea that you know why didn't i think of this before it's so smart sure. it's so intelligent and that's how we realized that maybe we should combine our talent and start something and that's how the minimalist came about only as a facebook page and okay. that's where the journey began understood so you you mentioned a very good point i think about uh, 
they don't you know maybe entrances exam like iit uh, for iit don't kind of uh, uh, you know check your aptitude but ju ju just check how smart you are or how analytical you are or how you are good with your studies so uh, what do you think is the difference so when i compare this to like a cat which is more like an aptitude test they they check your logical reasoning they they check your english they check your vocab they check your uh, you know analytics everything it's like a very holistic exam so i'm i'm not sure if you you know how cat works or how if, even if you've appeared up for it but uh, I, how how would you weigh if you have some context on uh, weighing the entrance exam for like an mba or maybe i an, an iit i think I, i have not studied for a given cat right. so i am really not qualified to answer but i would hazard a guess that i think all of these exams just check for general smarts and uh, whether the person is street smart and can hack their way of course cat probably since they have english they also want people who can be prepared for those uh, you know really prestigious and fancy IB jobs. jobs yes exactly <laughs> uh, and which is to some extent more iit also does it doesn't check english and all it, it just yeah. checks for pure uh, smartness and also hard work because there's so much to cover in those two years which right. people cover much much later right so you have mm -hmm. to actually study all of those things consistently over the two years you have to bear that pressure and you have to perform on that d day so it actually Correct. checks your hard work uh, ability to perform under pressure and you know raw intellectual smartness but not really whether this person wants to be a scientist does this person really pursue science in his free time i mean how how much does uh, scientific thinking uh, occupy his mind you know those are not concerns and that is when you enter engineering institution that realize that oh this is totally different which is why a very small vanishingly small percentage of people actually go for higher studies after iit most of them are either starting up or find themselves in consulting finance or business kind of roles yeah i think iit mba is a very cream combination that you know you do iit then you go for a good mba from like top abcs and then you go into like hardcore consulting with bcgs and mckinsey and stuff like that uh, so but and this reminds me of uh, three idiots which like i think a 10 12 year old movie where you know if they show the real difference between who exactly should be like a science student who's more interested in kind of researching or coming out with innovation how science can help versus just people who are uh, you know mugging it up and sitting for exam to just get a job so uh, i think that that context which you gave it makes sense uh, and obviously uh, you spoke about having those one liners which are funny i see that on your linkedin post as well today that you you have a witty uh, way of writing about uh, you know stuff i, I think uh, one of the posts when i was uh, checking out was i think the recent nimon campaign which you guys have launched uh, i think and uh, yes, i, I find that was shoes, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so that was that was really like uh, uh, you know creative i i i felt but uh, yeah i think uh, uh, i i can see it in your writing the what you were explaining with that one liners on facebook Or, or your, yes, or the yes. pages. Even in our campaigns for our clients, the objective is to be very inventive, and that's our vision as a company. Also, that we want to be India's most inventive company in the creative business. And right. that inventiveness is how do you really do things differently? How do you do uh, campaigns or uh, you know design pieces or even marketing uh, hacks that really break the script and do something very different? And that's what you know even keeping me busy right now, and presumably it will for the next few years as well. Got it. Got it. Uh, what? led to starting minimalist like after you and chirag met you guys were creative you guys wanted to enter into this space uh, maybe in, during college you guys decided uh, when did you finally like you know break the shackles and like okay you know let this engineering be aside we want to go ahead and start this uh, agency and how did you come up with this uh, name also the minimalist because uh, people associate a lot with this word uh, in terms of the way of living right uh, you know this guy is a minimalist guy he has really less possessions he loves to love to live loves to live like that so how did you kind of start like put a break on yes i want to decide the create go into a creative space and the name obviously because i really like the way of living the minimalist life but how was that coming into the agency side of the business right so when we started what we realized like i said was that we wanted to create a lot of thought provoking work and the best way we figured out to really provoke thought and do very inventive stuff is to really keep it very simple and put the burden of thinking on the user you do you strip it down to the most simple essence of anything that you're doing be it a campaign be it a ui ux assignment that you're doing be it a video production assignment 
whatever it is i think minimalism should be at the core because that really brings out thought provocation and right. back in the day when we were starting minimalism was not a trend in india in fact not even globally right. even in india and we realized that this is a good space that we can occupy and we can literally own the space because there's no one here and we had a natural bent for coming up with very simple ideas very straight okay. sharp witty simple ideas which hit, hit hard and hit to the point so that's why we realized that why not make this our own identity of course it was not that easy to come up with the name we came up with 100 bad names before <laughs> coming up with this and it finally clicked and that's when so you asked about how it started and how we finally decided to leave our iit background behind and that entire right. pursuit of a you know uh, amazing job from iit behind and do this so uh, honestly and you know this is a question that we get asked very often uh, both in such discussions as well as by a lot of people who are either trying to figure out their own journeys or seeking some sort right. of inspiration you know the truth is that uh, these decisions don't really happen on let's say a particular moment where you consciously decide that yes this is what we'll do and then uh, the paths diverge and you have a very clear path forward these are all hazy uh, experiments that keep going on for days or months and finally in hindsight you build a story around it that oh we did this it happened that way and this is how we grew most uh, founding stories are what are ultimately just stories right they are not really uh, hardcore concrete truths so i right. tell you the real truth what happened was we were just building a facebook page because we thought that this is a very unique concept let's just put out some very unique content and let's see where it goes of course <laughs> monetizing it later was in the back of our mind the exact form and shape that it would take was not something that we had absolute clarity on and when we started our facebook page over time of course initially it started with just two of us uh posting stuff from our dorm rooms and a few hundred people following it but over time it caught fire there was a lot of traction because some of our pieces went viral in fact back in the day any time a news piece would break out we would come out with our own minimalistic take on that uh, news piece so for example if the maharashtra government has banned beef or some controversy has happened we would come out with a minimalistic take on it and that uh, would actually break the internet and would go viral wow. so looking at that a uh, lot of people started following us and very soon we had a following of 50000 100000 on our facebook wow. page so uh, you know without even realizing two things happened one we were doing what is today called moment marketing right all brands do it all right. the time right this is a staple in all marketing uh, uh, organizations uh, but back in the day it was not even a word and we were doing it right so we were one of the earliest people to do it and even we didn't know that this is something this is a, a thing right in, in marketing and secondly you know back in the day uh, we didn't know but we were the original creators right so today creator economy creators is very very prominent but back okay. in the day there was no creator there was no instagram actually or maybe instagram was there but it was just sort of coming up in india yes uh, so without even knowing we were the earliest versions of creators and in the course of those experiments brand started reaching out to us saying that if you're doing this for fun and this is so cool why don't you actually do it for us why don't you do brand marketing or brand strategy and design or maybe ui ux or larger campaign and that's literally how we realized that you know it, in the course of building this community we've already started getting leads so why don't we sort of start taking those assignments and that's literally how the company came into being so it didn't start as a concrete uh, structure or as a solid business plan it came out very organically and serendipitously understood understood so uh, sahil uh, one thing that is very peculiar about iit bombay <clears throat> is that a lot of alums if i may say so of iit bombay have took up to the creative field right like a, lo- a large part of tvf's team is from iit bombay right. a large part of your team is from iit bombay and then there are people like vipul goel and all who are individualistic uh, people but they are still coming from an iit bombay background so yes. i just wanted to understand uh, from an institutional standpoint right like were there any such pillars or any such uh, events or groups you know that helped in building that creative muscle or again is it something that was happening in isolation with different individuals throughout the campus no i think you are absolutely right and you asked a great question this is actually very institutionalized and you know in any particular community or a group the culture of that group defines what gets valued and what uh, gets prestige right and the great part about iit is that there is 
I mean, people think that IIT is full of nerds who go there and study all day, but that's actually the exact opposite of what actually happens at IIT. Nobody really, you know, is with their books all day. In fact, everyone's out of their rooms, always involved in one cultural activity or another. So in IIT, in the entire pecking order, uh, prestige is acquired when you have involvement and are good at one of these extracurricular activities, right? So either you're a uh, superb sports guy who's made it to the inter IIT competitions, or you are someone who is absolutely uh, good at dramatics, or you are an artist, or you are a musician, or a guitarist, or a drummer. So there are all these inter-hostel competitions that happen every year, and there's a proper cultural league where all hostels have to compete with each other on dance, music, uh, you know, sports, tech. So there's like cultural events through and through and there's a proper league system and there are winners and there's a lot of pride associated with these events. And there are other cultural uh, events. So there's an annual concert that happens for music. There's an annual dance uh, fest that happens. There's a performing arts fest where everyone actually comes together and puts an entire uh, uh, theater film together where even the production is done Literally, there's a huge set that is put together by like hundreds of people coming together. So there are voiceovers, there's acting, there's original music, there's drama, there's production. So there's, you know, IIT life is only full of all these things. Uh, and academics literally come on the last day. Uh, of course, not for everyone, but uh, I'm talking about the representative group. So I think because of these things, people are very oriented with respect to performing arts or music or dance or stand up and that could be the reason you're seeing so many people entering the creative space uh, i'm sure a lot of these people uh, were actually pursuing those particular strands when they were at iit and naturally they got into those uh, fields Correct. So, uh, I, I think this is the same point which uh, we had uh, two uh, folks earlier. One was uh, Pratham Mittal, who's founder of Masters Junior, it's an MBA institute, and the other one was a guy from uh, Bits Pilani, right? So, both of them had the same view that the, uh, I would say, uh, the curriculum across all engineering colleges, so as to say, is mostly the same. There is not a very huge difference. But what is different is the quality of students and the network that you build, right? I mean, right. Uh, in BITS also, there is no attendance rule, right? It's not compulsory for you to attend classes and stuff like that. So what actually happened was... Uh, Every uh, Bits Pilani guy has some group or the other, be it performing arts or be it a startup industry, be it aerospace or whatever. And they start keep doing gigs which they like and, you know, no one's like bothered. They, for some reason, they just play poker for like two nights continuously without doing anything uh, to just like chill out, make a different types of, uh, you know, uh, just co-curriculars as you spoke about so that's what kind of builds that relation and most of the co-founders also of huge companies they are either batch mates or one batch senior junior because that's how they connect and kind of build uh, the the company or build whatever they want to so i i think i resonate with what you're saying absolutely and i mean iit i am these are all like one giant networking arena where people spend four years, two years, five years with each other and that's where the teams for future unicorns are actually built or maybe, you know, artists or creative groups or whatever it is that they eventually get built. And also I feel, uh, you know, one small thing that I didn't add earlier was that for the first three years of my IIT life, I was absolutely clueless about what to do. While people were building the best and most formidable resumes, I had actually no idea what I wanted to do and I had nothing good on paper to show. So I was very sure that I'm not going to get a job at least from here, uh, based on who I'm competing with. Uh, but what I realized was in the course of tinkering and spending time with different creative pursuits, maybe that helped somewhere. Maybe it helped me align with what I was probably good at and what I could uh, do in the future. So I think there's a lot of value to just tinkering, spending time, letting those ideas come to you rather than very actively and, you know, uh, forcefully chasing ideas and try to finalize something that you want to do. I think to... Spend your time tinkering and let those ideas come to you. It's naturally going to result in something that you're uh, aligned with and inclined with. So, Sahil, like, again, you said that the entire journey was very serendipitous in terms of the, st the start of Minimalist, right? And uh, I guess back in the day when you guys started at that time, startups, funding, etc., etc., was not even a very known concept, right? So, in terms of building an organization first and an agency second bottom up without having, you know, very 
institutional experience in it right like say if you would have been from an nid or something we would have flocked to you you guys were completely novices in the market with some amount of traction on social media right so mm-hmm. how was the journey of engineering folks with limited design experience starting an agency because they went viral and then creating a business out of it like how did you right. attract the right talent how did you get the right brands on board because again your core expertise from college was something very different which you which you guys were doing was a passion project which turned into a business and then became a business so i uh, just wanted to understand that side of things right. you know right naturally like you said it was not an easy journey especially on the org building front because we were not just novices we had never even worked in a company so level on starting up we, we didn't even have any corporate experience to tell us that you know these are certain basic processes that an organization should have this is how you hire this is why you need an office in the first place in fact when we first tried hiring a designer they asked where is your office and we were like oh we actually don't have an office and that's when we realized okay let's start looking for one so that's how uh, stupid we were actually and i would say uh, regardless of whatever happened one disclaimer is that we got very very lucky and we feel very fortunate that things have played out the way they have so in the course of this conversation whatever i say it's i'm not trying to attribute any uh, you know smart thinking to ourselves i'm just telling you what happened uh, but at the end of the day i think there's tons of luck and i believe it's mostly luck for any founder who has uh, achieved anything in his venture uh, his or her venture sorry Uh, so yeah coming back to your question um, i think initially hiring the talent was extremely difficult uh, we didn't know whom to hire so it took time for us to understand what kind of skill sets do we even need in the first place then where do you get them and then third is how do you really attract them and convince them to work in a company that's situated in front of sunny bar in a <laughs> in a loft which used to be a vegetable market so that's that it was a big challenge uh, we didn't even have any cash uh, it, so in fact we are with so it was a bootstrap from hell we had zero rupees so it was all working on projects reinvesting that cash constantly reinvesting then paying the deposit paying the rent then getting more cash flow and hiring the first person that's how we have actually gone from 2 to 160 today so it's it's been an absolute bootstrap journey and that made it even harder uh, because uh, even if you have a little bit of seed capital you can at least get a decent office or uh you know hire a few people initially that do take your bets on so that was hard in terms of convincing brands i think uh, what really helped was uh, of course initially the iit network helped uh, we didn't really have to go to anyone asking for work work came very organically to us because people were so impressed by the content that they were seeing and i think that's the power of uh, you know building a strong community and having a strong brand presence people till date remember us for that although we have moved much beyond that content we uh, are doing creative technology project we are doing video production we are doing hardcore ui ux for uh, some of the biggest unicorns and uh, tech companies but people still remember uh, the principles and techniques of minimalism from what they saw earlier so i think it's a very memorable thing that helped initially in generating traction and secondly i think the story also was very interesting for brands uh, you know brands naturally were very intrigued when they saw that there are these young iitians who are getting into the creative space that naturally is a very unique story and everyone wants to know how it started and there's a there's a sort of uh, uniqueness to it which attracts people and they want to try this out so that sort of went in our favor and more often than not you know people really like a left brain right brain confluence which was really our strength so we got the analytical thinking on the table as well as the creative side of things so that really attracted people and felt i mean they felt that you know we should give it a shot and over over time i think we got a lot of inquiries from the biggest brands and i think one thing led to the other so we were very fortunate but those those are some of the things that really worked out for us awesome yaar so sai just one last question on this right which uh, you know i i had as of curiosity and then we can you know full blown move into the agency bit so i think for every creative creative tech organization there is this one campaign that just puts them to the world right that sets them on to the bigger stage so from the time you guys started doing it as a passion project to actually setting up a business right which was that one project one brand one campaign that you worked with you know just took minimalist from say 0 to 10 or 10 to 100 overnight right so there are a couple of things i would like to say over there so there was no we didn't actually have that one thing uh, there were multiple things that kept happening there were bigger brands that we kept working with and 
that got even bigger brand uh, of course uh, we have done a lot of work that has uh, got good traction or won multiple awards so our work for tata aig where we did the entire digital transformation for them uh, where their web uh, xp ui ux now looks like any any of the best digital uh, insurance startups that actually won us multiple gold awards for best ui ux uh then our campaign for neemans like some have said was actually quite uh, unique and it, it it got a lot of good traction but if you ask me what has been the best work of the minimalist so far that we are that i am personally the proudest of i would say that work is ahead of us so i'm really uh, i'm not very satisfied i am i'm still very very hungry and uh, that's what's keeping me busy right now so if i have to come back to you i'll i'll probably come back to you a year or two later and tell you this i am really proud of this because i am not satisfied at all I, I think that will never happen because the a moment you raise the bar, you'll be like, okay, I can do a little more better. I can do a little more better. So uh, it, it'll it'll always be that hunger that you know I still can do better. Still can do better. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, so uh, like again, you know, when it comes to minimalist, the only brand that comes to my mind uh, in terms of how they position themselves is Apple, right? I feel right. it's the most minimalistic brand in terms of how they, uh, you know, market their products or brand their products. Like for MacBook Air, it's like light years ahead, right? Or for you know their color, uh, colorful iPads which they came out with, you know, like it's like likable, drawable, magical, or lovable, drawable, magical, or something like that. So I think that one liners plus. Uh, you know uh, i remember steve jobs always saying that you know simplicity is the ultimate sophistication and i think it it goes l- well with you being you know a very minimalistic kind of creative ad agencies uh, the next idea i would want to know is how was uh, content creation like maybe when you started at 10 years back or 8 9 years back to what it is today because you know you guys are like the ogs on content creation when content creation was not even like a word in anyone's dic- dictionary now everyone talks about content content every other guy maybe if he has a good content uh, you know uh, idea he 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 converts it into an ad agency uh, which you started almost like a decade back right so what is the difference between content produced a decade back to what it is today right i think it has dramatically changed right now in fact we are talking on this podcast you know back in the day there were no podcasts so that is like a oh, seismic change that has happened today in fact the formats have totally changed like you can see uh, even instagram back then was new today instagram's organic reach is almost uh, gone today only reels and shorts and those kind of things are working a broader you know, of course tiktok is also working but that short video format or you know a lot of the content which is to do with uh, how do you exploit features in the platform and do something interesting or innovative with it you know audio content explosion of uh, these uh, you know videos and all so i think the nature of content has uh, changed dramatically there's a lot more uh, audio video interaction live chats you know uh, live podcasts or even sort of youtube lives that have sort of taken over uh, but the principles of uh, good content creation have not changed and they probably never change and that is what we have actually covered in our book uh, think like the minimalist i mean back in the day formats were very different but the same formulas apply even today if you want to get uh, attention from the audiences if you want your content to stick you have to constantly use those principles so yeah uh, while i think it's undergone a big change and going forward it will continue to change even more as uh, we sort of if if we happen to get breakthrough technologies like let's say ar glasses you know content will suddenly be much more interactive and immersive if we get you know the entire hype around metaverse if that even comes to 10% of what the hype is uh, the way we engage with media will uh, change dramatically in fact gaming everything might get gamified so yeah things will change but things to make people stick will never change understood uh, again uh, just to reiterate a little more uh, as well you know with the uh, ai coming into picture you know the likes of chat gpt uh, to some extent a lot of content creators uh, which i would say used to make generic content i mean which is already there in uh, you can google it and do it and they just present it in a better way uh, it might be dead going forward like i would say a normal personal finance content creator right because all of that is in google it's just packaged in a better way but with the invention of ai chat gpt do you think a lot of content creators which have come over the last two years and uh, you know will will start losing themselves or stop positioning themselves because uh, i think chat gpt can do anything today right if you want to just 
present a good content in a better way then chat gpt just does it for you so uh, do you think because of this ai because of you know uh, all the tools coming in which help people to write content anytime like if i want to write a linkedin post i can just do it by putting something on chat gpt and cut copy paste right uh, how is that going to change the entire scenario on the content or ad agency side of the business right so i think looking at what where chat gpt is today in terms of its current capabilities and output it will not it is not really capable of doing anything very creative uh, and of course that might change over time i am just talking about where it is right now so right now in fact i have tried uh, using it to generate mm-hmm. some very creative output in fact i gave very clear briefs also to it and where it didn't have to do much creative thinking it was more about trying out hundreds of iterations to see can you get to that creative point but it it actually fails at those tasks right yes. so uh, uh, right now it's not uh, very good in terms of pr- producing creative ideas although it has uh, done a bit of uh, i mean it can adopt different kinds of tonalities and it can impress people generally because it's conversational so it yes. does end up impressing humans uh, but uh, you know what you said earlier will content creators uh, lose out because of this so the thing is because this is a big change in how anyone can now sound like shakespeare so what will happen is that the basic level of i mean what is expected from humans is going to rise so you have to work produce work that is above what chat gpt can produce if you are producing it below that level of course you are not going to survive because anyone Correct. can do that so right. the, so the standards of what's expected from regular content creators is definitely going to go up and on linkedin Uh, or any other platform you won't really see chat gpt purely chat gpt generated content being loved okay. by people people are still going to love content created by humans because so far ai hasn't gotten that capability of connecting disparate insights and producing something yes. that invokes a sense of delight the day it does manage to do that uh, of course uh, will be a totally different day in human history but uh, so okay. far we aren't there but yes it has dramatically changed things and lot of the average stuff a stuff that doesn't require much creative input will naturally not survive for long i think that human connection which you build by doing or creating content where you know you have a personal touch with your audience that that cannot be replaced by any ai bot until now i think right yes. i mean that's something that's which exactly you... so right now you have to just be above what it can do correct take a hard look at what you do and just ask yourself can this be actually automated or not even automated can i give sharp pointed briefs and iterate my way to that content on any uh, any chatbot right if the answer is yes then there needs to be something got but today we are far from it as we progress we will see how it will continue to disrupt the content again nobody can predict all of this i would not yes. pretend that i know anything about how the future will play out right uh, but let's see got it uh sir so just a very simple question how does an ad agency work how do you uh, uh run a creative ad agency um uh, it's very simple you get a lot of clients and clients have insane demand and you have to ensure that you meet the demand keep them happy do a lot of creative work and keep your people happy and all of doing all of these things is very difficult together so it's just this journey that you have to do and figure out what you want to prioritize and how do you really get get a lot of growth while you manage all of these things right but, but like you run a team of like 160 170 or people right and there will be different domains different departments that they run across and uh, like how how do you bifurcate like duties between you and chirag uh, what, what are the nitty gritties that you need to kind of make sure when you run like such a big team uh, that you have to you know make sure that that's in line uh, with with the expectations of the people who are working for you and obviously getting the right kind of output from them right so essentially uh, i'll give you a bit of an idea on the structure so we have two business units one is marketing solutions where we work with brands to build their entire brand strategy turn it into the entire branded design system and scale it in terms of all marketing channels be it uh, you know social media or performance or influencer or even video production so we have a video production team in house and also a lot of the creative tech kind of ideas in 3d ar uh, nfts those kinds of things right we are also dabbling with web3 for brand and the second part is the experience design where it comes very close to the web3 part which i said where we work with clients to do ui ux across web apps mobile apps web products so this is a hardcore design and product team so that those are the two business units and apart from that there is a corporate center which works across you know bd finance legal hr all of those things 
so we have tried to create uh, smaller teams within the entire structure and we have tried to turn them into sort of mini agencies within the superstructure that is the entire agency itself and what we are trying to do is turn them into self managed teams so they can grow autonomously and try to sort of take ownership of creative goals of business goals of uh, you know team growth personal growth all of those things so that's the structure of course getting the right people is the hardest because you know creative talent of course is never easy to find um, especially when you are competing with other startups also for the same talent but yeah we have uh, seen that helping people understand your own culture what you expect from the work and constantly communicating and orienting them regarding what really the gold standard of creativity and what we mean by inventiveness is the only way to sort of align your expectations and get to the output that the organization really wants so it's a hard process but it's uh, wip right now awesome i think sell that that gives a very you know nice perspective on how agency businesses are run so <clears throat> sir just to move towards the conclusive end of the conversation right wherein we have two fixed questions that we have for all our panelists um before that i just wanted to ask you one question which is a follow up to what uh, samya had already asked right is that with uh, the insurgence of ai and ai becoming more and more intelligent right like chat gpt is just text there is dali that is there for image and there are a lot of other generative ai tools that are there for other visual presentations right what do you think will be the landscape for agency models or marketing firms say 5 years 10 years down the line like if 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 we have to be very futuristic and utopian at the same time how do you think uh, that would look like yeah in fact we recently had a hackathon to you know construct uh, metaverse experiences across categories so our teams had a blast using these metaverse prototype platforms you know maxing out their mid journey accounts it was very interesting and our teams are already using uh, these all these ai tools quite a bit and what i foresee is that this will just keep increasing over time uh, unless there is a dramatic uh, reversal of some sort which nobody can foresee but yeah these things that make life easy in fact probably there might be tools that make you know you know realistic video creation also possible through ai alone right like real world uh, videography now if that comes again as a major disruption and i think what agencies will have to do is constantly realign themselves with the emerging technological world order uh constantly realign their own business model uh for now chat gpt has not meant that all copywriters uh are dead what it has meant is that for now it's a tool that they can probably use but going forward as these things evolve we'll also have to constantly evolve i think it's a it's a very uh, exciting and tumultuous journey that's ahead for all all people involved in the creative space Uh, hopefully it will continue to make life easy and hopefully it will free people up to do what's really creative than constantly doing a lot of the garbage work that all of us have to do uh, by virtue of being uh, in 2023 but hopefully by probably 2030 2050 we'll do less garbage and purely focus on the creative aspects of what truly makes us human Awesome, awesome. That that's super interesting, right? So, Sahil, just the last two questions that we have for all our guests, right? One is very in line with the theme of our podcast, right? Which Samya in the beginning had explained. Um, so, we are seeing that a lot of uh, folks in the agency space as well are getting into the venture or the venture building side of things, right? Like one classic example though of this is uh, Harsh from Shabang, wherein he's teamed up with uh, Ranveer to build level up right so uh, and I, another co-founder of Shabang is also building a, a startup in the personal finance space if i may say so right so again we are seeing a lot of confluence between sectors which were earlier isolated but now they are very intertwined right so just wanted to understand uh, your thesis on this and if we will ever get to see Sahil Vaidya and Angel investor side of things as well <laughs> uh angel investing i don't know honestly because there are always opportunities and uh, we ended up almost uh, doing a deal or two also recently but we didn't uh, and i'll tell you why i think angel investing is a very different ball game altogether and 
most people think that they know how to how it works but in reality probably no one in the world knows how it works people only have some heuristics and i don't think i have the time right now or the money right now to do tens of deeds and uh, you know probably go around telling people that i am an angel investor and put it on top of my linkedin <laughs> i'm not really, really very interested in that right now uh, which is a big perk of you know doing one deed and shouting about it so right now i i'm not uh, very inclined nobody knows what will happen in the future i'm not trying to berate anyone who does it of course it's a superb thing to do people have made crazy money people have learned a lot if you have the time and the money to do it by all means go ahead and do it for me right now i am very focused on what's in front of us which is this famous task of building a building india's most inventive company in the creative business that's what keeping me busy so honestly i don't have the bandwidth to think of these pursuits and i i am very realistic that i don't know anything about it i'm not going to fool myself into thinking that i have been in uh, the venture building space where i know how co- all sorts of companies are built so probably some day uh, some day it might happen but not as of now fair 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 that, that that's super interesting yeah sahil so sahil just one last question and i think this question is all the more relevant to you as a guest than the other guests that we've had is that um what are the learning resources that you might have used uh, while in in college to build your knowledge uh, database if i may say so right because you are a self taught designer you started a started an agency from scratch so we assume that you might be using or you're still using a lot of knowledge resources to keep yourself updated and upbeat to to the common daily trends right so any sort of resources and through that if you could also tell the audience a little about your book what is it about how did the idea of the book come in the picture that would be super helpful right i'll actually talk about the book quickly and then jump on to the knowledge resources because that's a more ex- extensive thing uh regarding the book yeah it's called think like the minimalist it's an encapsulation of our entire philosophy of minimalism and how all kinds of you know people you know right from content creators to marketers and brand managers to even founders and cxos can use the art and science of minimalism and those techniques to do really thought provoking and inventive things like i said earlier the formats may change but the art and the craft remains the same and what we have learned over the last uh, almost a decade or so is that creativity is not something that just descends from the clouds to a few select people and only those rule over the domains of creativity all humans are creative and specifically when it comes to content or marketing or communication so there are techniques there are there are techniques which are learnable which are repeatable and if you if you understand those principles you can repeat them constantly to create output that delights that goes viral that sticks right and what we have done in that book is to summarize a list of those techniques with broad mental models and principles that we have seen uh, and we have applied we have learned our way through it and we have applied them and repeatedly we have seen them succeed both in our own uh, example of building a content property that has hundreds of thousands of followers and millions in reach as well as doing those things for our brands and building a company out of it so so i think it's a tool for anyone interested in creativity anyone who is a practitioner right now be it in a management or a founder capacity or a brand or marketing manager or just a content creator or to pick up those techniques learn them and start applying them and fortunately a uh, lot of people actually did so if you guys know uh, labor law advisor one of the largest uh, content creators in the finance space they actually the founder of lla actually read the book and he started applying those principles and got very good traction in lla itself so there is a lot of immediate applicability it's not just philosophical things that book is replete with uh, 50 plus examples of how we have done it not just for ourselves but brands there are very immediate actionable techniques so we wanted to write something that's simple that's short of course minimalistic and something that can be immediately applied by anyone so so that's the long and short of it in terms of the book now coming to the knowledge resources i mean that's a favorite topic of mine because i am obsessed with learning and mental models and reading reading so to speak the most obsessed with reading um so uh, more than back in the day i think i am learning much more now than i was earlier i think the first 3 4 years of the journey was literally just running around and it was just back breaking work trying to build the company and in the in the journey of doing so i think what really helped and initially i would suggest that 
it would be best to align with people or take advice from people who are who are very similar in terms of what you're trying to do who have been there done that so you know ray dalio calls it you know believable people so when he says believable it means people who have done exactly uh, what you are doing right and you know be- believability weighing so weigh it with three four people who have done the same thing so you get a diversity of opinions and don't just follow one person so go to three four people who have done this i did it because i went to my dad who has already built a b2b services organization of 300 plus people he has also bootstrap so he's exactly done what i did and his advice in the course of those early days was invaluable I owe a debt of gratitude to him so i would suggest initially uh, for me that was what was working quite a bit but also what worked over the course of this entire journey of the last 7 8 years is reading very very widely uh, so i think founders entrepreneurs or even creative people uh, one thing that should not be ignored is reading as widely as possible principally beyond the domain in which you are involved you know typically founders or business leaders or cxos read business books and nothing else i would recommend the exact opposite of it read as widely as possible read fiction um read philosophy read anthropology read psychology read about human societies and culture read lots of history read about religion that is only when you start understanding who we are where we have come from what's our story how do human societies operate how does the human mind operate how do you influence people what is power uh, how has this entire culture and this this country or this entire world emerged right if you don't understand those things it's very hard to sort of start applying principles from thousands of years or hundreds of thousands of years of history that we have behind us and you know they say that history repeats itself some say history doesn't repeat it rhymes of course all of that may be true or false but what's clear is there are patterns in the past you need to learn from the past the the dead people outnumber the living by 13 to 1 so why don't you learn from the dead rather than repeating their mistakes so that's why i recommend read as much as possible from the past and since i have been also reading a lot i try to sort of condense and distill what i write into you know 5 minute weekly newsletters in my own newsletter and it's called the learning machine because i strongly believe that everyone should build a learning machine for themselves that's an articulation of my own learning machine where i try to give out very snackable 5 minute mental models and big ideas that i'm reading across all these disciplines and what i mean by the learning machine is that you should literally build a machine for learning so read a lot of books listen to a lot of podcasts even tune into lectures um there are a lot of very good long form articles if for some reason reading is just not possible and learn from you know such conversations or discussing with other people so i think everyone needs to build a learning machine around themselves it's not just one thing or one size fits all it's a multiple variety of sources so you can constantly learn challenge your ideas get contradicted think through them write and sort of try to formulate your own ideas before arriving potentially at what's really true and how this world works so i know it was a long uh, thing that i said but i i really feel and i'm passionate about the concept of a learning machine and the need for people to build absolutely love it as i um, and uh, i think uh, what you explained about you know reading across domains and not just like fixating to what you are doing uh, i think that that's is really helpful because uh, i am an avid reader but i only read non fiction because i just think that that is more valuable than fiction but uh, now that i think of what you are saying it makes sense because there are a lot of ideas coming from like a fiction story also which you are reading right so i think that all helps any recommendations which you would give of your top 3 4 books or podcasts or newsletters uh, which have really helped you over the past few years uh, that would really be helpful as well absolutely in fact just on that fiction point i, I hear that very often and yeah. probably 5 years ago even i used to prioritize non fiction but what i've learned is that uh, even through fiction you can learn so much philosophy so if you read <laughs> read uh, let's say books like three body problem or you know ted <laughs> chang's short story you know story of your life and other short stories I mean, they are just mind-blowing in terms of what they have thought about the world that they have imagined, the situations that they have imagined for humanity. And science fiction is actually a very potent tool for philosophy. So God. fiction can do that for you. Fiction can help you really empathize with people from cultures that you probably have no idea about. So I read books. Uh, I, I read. Uh, I read fiction books on, you know, let's say, life in Egypt or the civil war in Sri Lanka or what's it like oh. to live in war zone Afghanistan and so you'll never be able to understand those people's stories and when you dive into these books you get a piece of their lives the suffering <laughs> that they have gone through 
you know, also realize how much gratitude you should have for uh, whatever you have. You know, right. reading about fiction, there is an author, Father uh, Susan Manto, who used to write very powerful short stories about partition days in India. When you read about those stories, you realize the horrors of partition and how fortunate you are that you don't have to live in a world that you know our ancestors 75 years ago were living through. So That's fiction right. helps you empathize with hundreds of perspectives which you would never have had and will probably never also have. So I think a lot of the TV shows and movies as I feel not really hitting that note and helping people empathize. And I think it's the entire fact of reading that helps you empathize in a much more Correct. detailed way than just a one hour movie. Uh, and movies people generally watch for entertainment. So I think fiction yes. books can play a very good uh, role in that. Uh, coming to recommendations, there are so many. Uh, I, I can't really stop. But if I had to recommend a few. Uh, recently, I read a book called Bullshit Job, uh, which I really loved. It's about okay. the idea of so many jobs proliferating in the modern world, which are bullshit, which actually okay. don't serve any purpose. and frustrate people. So it's not about people, but the jobs that people are put in, which are useless, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Even the person can't justify the, the job that uh, they are doing. And the oh. impact of those jobs, why those jobs came into existence in the first place, the sociological and philosophical implications of the job. So that's a very interesting book. Uh, I read a book called uh, Behave last year, uh, mm -hmm. which is about how, how our psychology works, how human behave, different aspects of human behavior work and how there are so many influences right from uh, the activity in your neurotransmitters to the hormones to your genetics to some cultural influences hundreds of years ago to evolutionary psychology thousands of years ago. So many things come together to form that one simple behavior that you manifest in a split second. So it, it really shows uh, the complexity of human behavior and also led me further to think that probably there is no free will. So, so that was one very interesting book. Uh, mm -hmm. There are many others. If you are interested in psychology, maybe you can read Why Buddhism is True, another excellent okay. book yes, on yes. importance of and the profound ideas in Buddhist philosophy that are so that are being confirmed by modern psychology. So that was interesting. In fiction, I've already recommended Three Body Problem yes. and Red Tank short stories. Um, yeah, so there are lots. I keep writing about them on my newsletter also. Okay. If people are interested, they can check it out there as well. Sure. Sure. Uh, so uh, just to end now, uh, uh, one thing I wanted to say was uh, I read two books on creativity. I don't read so much on and those experts, but this there's a book called Creativity Inc. And there is a book called Show Your Work. Uh, I think those two books were really right good. in front of me right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I get to read it, but it's right in front of me. Uh, yeah. It's, it's too thick. So I took a lot of time to kind of finish it. But there is this show your work, which is just like a very light, easy read. Uh, you can probably finish it in like a couple of hours also. Uh, that is also very good in terms of how you should show your work, how creativity, uh, not creativity exactly, but how you want to show your presence that you just don't need to show your output, but, uh, uh, but you can also also show how you came up through that idea the behind the scenes and stuff like that so i think that was also uh, really powerful in in terms of uh, uh, reading a book uh, my last question is uh, since you have your uh, agency's name as minimalist uh, do you also live or try to live like a very minimalist life uh, as well uh, in a way yes i mean i i think i do uh, i minimize a lot of things a lot of uh, crap in my life, I okay. try to spend less, I try to buy less, I try to, um, you know, focus on only the things that matter and sometimes it can get a little irritating for people around me as well. Uh, but yes, I, I do believe uh, I only, I, I only do very few things that are the most important and focus on a uh, limited number of things. Understood. Understood. Awesome. Uh, I, I think, Sahil, we had a really good episode. I, I think we learned a lot from your experience, from your IIT days to building a creative agency, how, you know, you, 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 you kind of found your serendipity movement and, uh, you know, built a business out of it. And uh, obviously the reading part, uh, I, I love people uh, who, who read a lot because there's so much to learn from them because there are like tons of wisdom. They have it in themselves when, when they read so much. So I also try to kind of read like 30, 40 minutes a day uh, uh, and, and try to kind of, uh, you know, 
like just uh, i would say upskill myself so currently i am re- i am in that uh, stoic zone so i am reading uh, uh, ryan holiday's books uh, which which are like helping right. me out in just kind of living minimalistically i, I would say because i'm not so minimalistic in terms of my lifestyle uh, you know meditations and uh, having a disciplined life and all those stuff so uh, i think that kind of books are really helping me uh, so yeah i, I think uh, love the conversation and uh, uh, thanks again for taking the time out it was an absolute uh, ple- pleasure to to talk to you